Today on Mead Mythbusters, we're testing if you can actually taste potassium metoisulfite and potassium sorbate within a mead. Let's get started. So for this test, I want to see if I can actually taste, or we, a collective people I bring in, can actually taste potassium sorbate and metabisulfite in a mead. What I've done here, I have created two gallons of mead. The recipe I'm using is right here. It is about two and a quarter gallon of water, seven pounds of honey, and then five grams of Lavin EC1118, and three teaspoons of Fermax, which is an organic, um, food nutrient or yeast nutrient essentially. The starting gravity for this thing is 1.090. So we're looking at roughly the realm of a 11.8% mead, I believe. And I'll put it right there. That's my recipe. I've made the mead. It's now going to ferment. After the um, fermentation, I will split it into four half gallon containers. In one of them, in, within the four of them, I will leave a control. I will not put anything into that mead. It'll just be the regular, nothing added. So there's that one. In the second one, I am going to put potassium sorbate to stabilize it, which of course we're seeing if you can taste that ultimately too. Uh, in the third one, I'm gonna put potassium metabisulfite into that one. And the last one will be potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. I'm going to bring in some people to taste test each one in a blind fashion so they don't know which is which and they have to pick out which one does not have the sorbate or metabisulfite in it or that's the goal at least we'll find out so I've already created the mead um, I'll show a quick video here of my process I of course sanitized everything and within that just mixed everything up um, and that's that so it's it's already been created Let's let this thing go through the primary fermentation and then I'll split it into my four and we'll add all of our extra stuff afterwards. Okay, it's been about 32 days since we started this mead. It's been sitting for a while. It has been completed probably for a week or two. Um, I know it's done, or, or current gravity is 1.000, started at 1.090. For the sake of this test, we are keeping this dry, no back sweetening, all that. So. Here's what we're gonna do. We are now going to rack into four containers. These four right here, they have been sanitized with star sand and done all the stuff. And we will designate each one as the specific container, sorbet, all those things. Let me rack this over real fast. Okay, all of it is moved over. I still have some left over, that's okay. So this one is gonna be the nothing control, nothing crazy. This is the sorbate version. This is gonna be the sorbate and metabisulfite, and this is the metabisulfite. For the sorbate, I am using potassium sorbate in this form. So this is half a, tea, or half a teaspoon per gallon. We're gonna use a, obviously a quarter teaspoon because that would equal a half gallon. For the metabisulfite, we are using half of a Camden tablet. Camden tablets are uh, potassium metabisulfite, and we're gonna crush this thing in half so it's equal to half a gallon. Let me go ahead and put my ratios in of all of these things, and then we'll put them away. All right, everything is mixed in. Nothing, sorbate, potassium sorbate, and potassium metabisulfite, just the metabisulfite. Theoretically, these should uh, well, these are stabilized, I should say. This one is, is going to be stabilized. This is stabilized and has a preservative in it. And this just has a preservative in it, not really stabilized. Um, I'm gonna let these set for a month. So the test at the, at the point that we do the test will be about two months old, a little over two months old for these meads. Of course, could I elongate this and do it six months from now? Yeah, but the test is really just to see if we can pick up the taste of sorbate and metabisulfite. Now, I'm gonna put these away. They're gonna sit for a few weeks, like I said. And we'll come back and we will do the test. All right, we're at the point where it's time to bottle. It has been about a month and a half since I put them into here. They've been aging for a little while, not super clear. Again, I don't really care so much about clarity. We're talking about the taste. So I have here some 187 milliliter bottles. These things are half of a beer bottle. And I have taken, 
oops, I have taken and cut a synthetic cork in half. Now for reference, this is the half synthetic cork, this is a full synthetic cork. All I've done is cut in half because I am going to cork these bottles and if I do a full cork on it, you can see here that it is gonna take up a lot of space, but a little half cork will go on top. Now these bottles can be capped, but for reasons um, I don't wanna say right now, I am not capping them. So let's go ahead and bottle each one of them. All right, we've gone ahead and bottled everything. Each one has just a number on it. No other information to make this more of a blind test. Number one is the metabisulfite. Number two is the nothing version. Number three is the sorbate. And number four is both, metabisulfite and sorbate. Now I'm going to take this to my panel of multiple people with varied experience to taste test this. And uh, I would love to explain to you now how this test is gonna go, and then we'll get the test started. So here we go. All right, and we're back. It has been quite some time since I started this video. It's been about seven months, and uh, I did not intentionally mean to make it take this long. It just happened that way. So let's talk about our total results. Here's what I did. I sent those bottles to my panel of friends to taste test. So what they did was each person um, took each bottle and poured it into three cups. So they took number one and they had three cups and they poured a little sample into each one and then number two, three cups, three cups, all that stuff. That way there were 12 total cups equaling a grand total of 12, excuse me, equaling a grand total of three rounds. Within each round, they had a number one, a number two, a number three, and number four. They mixed them around, then they taste tested them. And as they taste tested them, their goal was to identify any odd flavors and then subsequently attempt to say, I think this is the sorbate or I think this is the nothing, those things. While they were doing this, I had them video themselves. So you'll see some video here of them taste testing, going through the process and filling out a form that I had sent them and I took their form results and basically copy and pasted them into my little thing here that you'll see in a moment. So talking about results now, um, let me tell you about the, what I've done is basically the, the number of correct guesses for each thing. So first of all, the number of correct sorbate guesses is five out of 18. So there were six judges, including myself, three rounds each. So that's 18 rounds in total. Five of the 18 rounds out of all of our judges, people guessed the sorbate correctly. The number of correct metabisulfite guesses was six out of 18. The number of correct uh, nothing guesses was five out of 18. And the number of correct both guesses was um, uh, five out of 18 as well. So I also did this test because I wanted to be part of it. And I also did it in a blind fashion. Um, I didn't know which one like, of course, I wrote down the numbers to see number one, number two, all that stuff. So whenever I did it, I had to hide my um, labels a little different, but I still participated. Anyways, when they were filling out this form, um, I had them take a guess at each one. So here are the results here, as you can see. Um, the overwhelming thing I heard uh, oh, with this whole mead itself was that there was a little bit of like slight bitterness from this mead in every single one of these. And that was uh, namely because it was dry and it was, it's just a dry traditional mead. And so it has a lot of uh, different characters. We left it dry to remind you because we wanted to make sure it not hide anything from the possible metabisulfite or the possible uh, sorbate tastes because I didn't want to askew results so we left them dry um so what happened here was the there was a slight bitterness from what i understand and i think that's just due to it being dry um regarding like any possible weird flavors um in my specific tasting i recall that there was a slight like acetone-ish uh taste in the mead what i found funny was that the in my guess, the slight acetone, I thought it was in the both version, but it was the nothing when I tasted that. So there was something interesting there that I tasted an acetone flavor in the nothing version, but not in 
the anything else. Um, we had some other people guess light acidity. Um, I, I could go through all the, the results here. I'll leave the, the link down below if you'd like to view these yourself. They're a little more in depth than I can go in right now. But the ultimate thing that I want to note is that only about a third of the, a third of the time did people get the guess right. And I think that's a testament to um, how to the taste of sorbet and metabisulfite. The whole point of this video is not to sit here and, and persuade you to suddenly start using these things because I understand that some people don't like using sorbates, metabisulfites, maltodextrins, anything that's considered a powder. And I, and I have nothing against that. So please do not watch this and go, he only supports this. I support brewing how you desire. I just wanted to put this to the test. I just found it interesting that the sorbate and the metabisulfite didn't put off a strong amount of flavor. Um, I thought they would. I also thought they would because of the quantity uh, that I put into each mead. I tried my best to put the proper ratios of things into the meads, but it was only half a gallon batch, so it was a little bit tough. So overall, I do believe that this test would have been even more difficult had I put some honey in to back sweeten these. Obviously, honey can fix some things, it can add sweetness, it can add complexity, it can do lots of things. Um, I do believe that it would have made the test a little harder. Ultimately, just my opinion, um, I am totally okay with using metabisulfite and sorbate because I believe that they help halt fermentation as you need it and allow you to back sweeten safely in these things. Um, I don't mind using them because I'm, I'm not necessarily too afraid of uh, off flavors, especially now. I'm also really not afraid of, of any other chemical reaction things. I understand that might not be your thing. So please do not listen to this and go, well, this was stupid. Of course, you know, of course they're not gonna add flavors. I just don't wanna do this, whatever. Um, ultimately, I want you to brew how you want to brew. I have enjoyed getting to put this to the test. It took seven months again, and um, who knows, maybe the quote flavor of the sorbate in metabisulfite is stronger earlier on. I don't necessarily have great results to say so, but I do have results to say it's a little hard to distinguish between these. I would love to know your opinion down below. So if you uh, enjoyed this, of course, leave a like and a comment and just let me know what you think. Um, have you found any difference between sorbates, metabisulfites? Uh, if you have, I'd love to hear the difference. Anyways, thanks again for watching. Thank you to my panel of friends here. I'll make sure to put their names. Um, shout out to them. I hope that you guys will join me for a future video and thanks for watching. Cheers.